Today in this Cinema 4D tutorial, I'm going to walk you through on how to create a very procedural and highly customizable bar graph and line chart. This is what we'll be creating. The bar chart is on the bottom. All these bars can be customized to be very thick, very thin. They can go negative. The colors can change and the colors will react to the height of the bars. And this requires zero coding. The line chart is also extremely simple to make and it can also react to the bar chart you create. And this only took two keyframes to animate. So let's just dive right in. All right, here I am in Cinema 4D with the standard layout. I'm gonna quickly get started and get through this as fast as possible because I hate slow tutorials. The first thing we need to do is add a cloner and we are gonna be cloning a null object. Drag that null into the cloner change the display of the null to a star or whatever you'd like and you can even increase the size of that star so you see it better and if you want to even see it even more better go to the transform tab of the cloner object and change the color in here to something like that okay so in the cloner we're gonna go to the object tab zero out the y-axis and we're going to spread out these clones along the z-axis here we go to around, yeah, whatever, to around there. These are going to represent our data points on the bar graph. Each of these stars will represent a bar, so we need to clone those. Let's change the mode first to endpoint instead of per step. Increase the count to around, you know, 25 or so. There we go, there's our data points. Now the next step is to get these guys moving, get them going up and down. To do that, we're gonna add a MoGraph Effector Shader. In the shading, uh, first in the Parameter tab, turn off Scale and turn on Position. And um, we're not gonna see anything yet in the Y axis until we add, oh yeah, we will. Okay, here's the height about of our bar chart. That'll be the top, top point, the top highest point in our bar chart. 143 inches I have. Don't ask why I changed my settings to inches, but I did. Go to the shading, add a uh, gradient. This will represent our bar's activity. So where black shows, this is the lowest point in our bar graph, and where white, the highest. We can add some handles here, click, or, click it and change it uh, to a gray scale, black or white. Let's make this a little less black so it's not the very bottom actually let's have this uh, graph start at the top have a little uh, dip at the beginning and then kind of over here maybe it goes really down really far down and then we get a little uh, point where it goes way up all right we'll just work with this graph for now so there's our gradient that represents our bar graph. Now we need to get some motion in here. Go to the fall off tab, add a linear field, change that direction to Z minus. Make sure it's outside of the bars so we get them all on the very bottom. This is where we are going to add our only keyframes. Click linear field, go to coordinates, uh, add a Z keyframe and then go to around, uh, we'll just say 50, move this to the end of our bar graph, and right about there, add another Z keyframe, and then we'll play that through, see what it looks like. There it is. Let's reduce the length of our timeline so it resets faster. There we go. All right, let's hide the linear field and let's add some um, some geometry. To do that, we are going to add a tracer, a MoGraph tracer. This is going to trace the movement of these nulls. Go to the tracer object tab. Oh, the clone is already added in there, but if it's not, drag the cloner into there and then play it back through. You'll start to see these lines show up. These are just... Um, um, splines that we're going to be working with. We're going to now generate the geometry with these splines by using a sweep nerve. Add a sweep, add a rectangle, size that rectangle down a little bit, and add the rectangle to the sweep. 
add the tracer under the rectangle and there's our geometry for the rectangle I like to keep a perfect square so I go to expressions set driver on the width on the height right click expressions set dri driven relative so now when I change my width it maintains that uh, perfect squareage there we go now we can hide our cloner so we don't see all those stars so let me just show you now if you go into your shader shader and go to shading go to your gradient and change these around the graph is going to update again black is our low point let's bring this way over here get rid of this bar and there we go here we'll add one more like it's a dipping a little bit at the end add a little gray in there not quite black or white there we go all right let's make this a little smoother now select your cloner go to MoGraph effectors and add a delay effector and we're gonna keep it on uh, blend mode and increase it to around 70 or 80 there we go see how nice and smooth that is instead of just one at a time all right that smoothed out now to add our line graph to the top we are going to copy all of this information well first we're going to group it and name this bars control drag for a copy name this line open that back up and the first thing we want to change is the tracer object instead of trace paths for the tracing mode we're gonna connect all objects and we're gonna get this line created right above our graph now to change that line around we're gonna go into the lines shader into the uh, effector tab open this minimum maximum tab and play with the maximum so it sits above the bar graph you don't have to do this you put it wherever you want but I like it hovering right above it right around there and then I also want to change the rectangle I'm gonna delete the uh, expression tag on the on the line so I can on the rectangle so I can uh, play with the width separately I want it to be real thin and real kind of wide and with some rounding less than that one inch so just like that let's play that real quick there we go there's our line and then uh, to get that real bouncy line on its delay we're gonna do a spring effect and let's watch that oh yeah there we go that's cool that's sick that looks pretty cool and you could play with this you can decrease the spring a little bit if it's too much and now that to smooth out those uh, sharp turns we can go to our tracer and on type instead of linear choose B spline on intermediate points choose adaptive on the angle drop that down to three and you'll get much smoother lines and to get even smoother so you're not picking up so much detail in this general line graph we can go to the cloner under the line and decrease the number of points to around there to get a more general look at what our bar graph is doing here we go boom much smoother line and just way more representative instead of detailed Shink. okay pause that all right we have our line we have our bars one thing we want to remember is in the bar shader this is going to be our master shader I'm going to name that master shader and inside the shader go to shading click on the gradient right click the gradient expression set driver so anything we do to this gradient should also happen to the line gradient go to the shader under the line click that gradient right click expressions set driven relative so now we can't even move these they're gonna bounce back so when we go to our master shader and mess with that gradient let's move this over here and make it less black and uh, make this oops a little more black so we have a little bit of a different chart 
there we go now you're gonna see our graph update and all of its gonna update the line is also gonna update with one change there we go shoink the next thing we want to do is start adding some color to this. I want color, I want there to be red on the low points and green on the high points. Uh, you can do whatever color you want. You can also change the uh, the bar graph size, which I, I kind of like doing. Uh, let's go to the sweep, see the rectangle. Let's make these big chunky bars, like real chunky. And then when you change the rectangle, you're also going to have to decrease the number of clones so they're not hitting each other. It's hard to see until you play it back. Let's decrease a little bit more. And just probably one more. Oh, maybe two more. I want a little gap in there. There we go. That's a different kind of bar graph. Real kind of chunky and cool. Mm, nice. Looks nice, nice, nice. And then, yeah, you can mess with it however you want. You can make the, the line graph a little thicker. I'll keep it. Um, I'm going to go back to how I had it. I just undoed until I got there. There we go. All right, let's start adding color. Close these up. Close the bars. Close the line. And now to add color, let's create a quick material. Drag it onto our bars. Um, actually, let's drag it onto our sweep. We're actually going to be moving that one more time. So right now the sweep is just generating one solid object. We need to break apart these bars so we can color them individually. To do that, we need to add another Mo graph object, fracture, drag that right above our sweep, drag the sweep into the fracture, select fracture, and on mode, instead of straight, we're going to say explode segments and connect. So now when you select that, you're not going to see any changes, but now we have individual access to each of these bars put the uh, material on the fracture. With fracture selected, we're going to add another effector, MoGraph effector, step effector. We're going to turn off the scale parameter. We're not going to use position, scale, or rotation, but we're going to use the color mode, which is going to be the effector color. In open up our material, go to color, MoGraph, um, color, shader. Now we're getting this nice gradient, but we're going to use an act. Actually, we're going to use a uh, colorizer. There we go. So this just adds a default gradient to our um, bar graph. When you click on it, you'll see what they've done here. What we need to do is go to our master shader in our bar uh, group, go to our shading, and again, we're going to set this as a driver, set driver. And then over here in this gradient expressions, we're going to make this uh, driven by that driver. So now we have that grayscale uh, gradient, which we're going to add color to now. But as you can see, we're having some issues here. Um, the blacks are supposed to be in the low spots, and the whites are supposed to be in our high points. The gray is supposed to be gray, black, and then white up here. And the only way I figured out how to fix that is by going to your project settings. And under project settings here, you're going to turn off linear workflow. And then it fixes um, much better at least. Um, this does mess with your lighting and stuff in the viewport and I think in render settings. But you can get that all fixed using lighting and some camera settings. This is the only workaround I found. Anyway, let's go back to color, add some color to this bar graph. We're going to do that by creating a layer. I clicked on uh, color, texture, and then I'm going to add layer. And another fallback of C4D is when you add a colorizer to a layer, it disappears in the viewport. You're not able to see the gradient. So I add an interactive render region to get a preview of the render and increase the render settings there. That's the only way to see it. So don't trust what you see in here until you get a uh, look at the render took me a while to figure out why that was disappearing. The colorizer in the layer needs to be set to a layer mask. Now we're going to add two colors. Add a red color, which is going to represent our lower points. Go back up. And another color, green. Make it a kind of a cool bright green. And slide 
the green below the colorizer, oh, opposite, slide the red below the colorizer and the green above it. And this, um, when your colorizer is in the middle with a layer mask, the one below it is going to replace the black colors and the color above it is going to replace the white colors. And there we have it. And one other thing, when you add a colorizer, when you add the colorizer to the layer, the driver is removed from here. So you need to go to expressions and set driven again to make sure that connection is made. So let's close that for a second and test it out, test out our master shader. We'll move these around like that and like that and update the animation. There we go. I don't like how immediate that is. Let's even remove that completely, make this gray. There we go. What happened? So as you can see, it's updating. This is red and it gets greener and greener as we get up. Looking fine, looking just fine, and then turns red again as it drops off. So we know that's updating properly. Um, let's drop a quick color onto our uh, our line. Add some luminance to that. Turn down the brightness a little bit. There we go. A white line graph. I'm not going to mess much with color and lighting. This is this is about how far I'm going to go. But let's go back into our uh, our color and copy that texture and turn on luminance and paste that texture into the luminance channel. And the same thing needs to happen. You need to go into the layer, go into the colorizer, and set uh, driven relative so that this updates also. This is really bright, but you can also mess with that. Let's go to the bars and uh, separate these a little bit. So we, uh, they're separated enough. Let's just add some ambient occlusion. So we get those shadows and decrease the maximum to like uh, 40. You can even change the color. I always like to do that. Maybe like a slate blue or slate purple. I don't know. There we go. We get some better gappage between those bars that's about it folks that's the bar graph with the line on top oh we're getting some we're having some issue with this line over here that is i think because in our line the shader's being driven right okay it is so we need to go to the effector parameter and play with this maximum minimum again I think it's happening. Maybe because it's just so sharp at the top there. Oh, I didn't have this issue before. Is it just as long? It looks like it's shorter. It's weird. 476. Oh, it is. I made my uh, z-axis longer on the bar than I did on the line. Go back to the cloner, copy that same in there. You can also um, make that a driver and driven so that when you change the length of it. Okay, that didn't fix it. I think it's just because the nature of this bar graph is just too steep right there. Let's go back to the master shader and bring that over here. Make that a little bit darker. I just need to make it more gradual. There, that's a little bit better. And then I'm going to also mess with this max so it's just a little bit higher. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and you guys create some cool bar graphs or whatever you might. Uh, I don't know, reuse this on. I'm not sure what else it could be used for, but I'm sure there are countless applications. Anyway, see you guys next time. Bye.